Okay, welcome to another video. So what we're going to do today is take a look at one of my low-key favourite underrated Linux distributions, which is Nitrix. So they've not long just released a new version of version 1.3.9. So it's been a little while since Nitrix has appeared on the channel, so I'm quite excited to see what's new in this release. Before we jump into it in the live environment, let's have a quick read through of the release notes and see exactly what is new of Nitrix 1.3.9. So we've got an updated default kernel of version 5.4.108. They also offer the latest as of this post mainline LTS and non-LTS kernels from our repository which are currently 5.10.26 and 5.11.10 respectively. We also offer the latest as of this post Licorix and Azamod kernels from our repository which are currently 5.11.0-10 and 5.11.10 respectively. So we'll have a go at installing them once we are fully installed and at the desktop. We also offer the latest as of this post Linux Libre LTS and non-LTS kernels from our repository, currently 5.10.26 and again 5.11.10 respectively. So the big news of this newest version is that Nitrix is no longer built upon an Ubuntu Focal root FS base and a mixture of dev1 repositories. Starting from this release, the distribution is now built using a Debian root FS. This change means that installing packages using apt and dpkg becomes less problematic compared to our previous releases. However, we want to emphasize that the preferred method to add new software to the distribution is to use app images. And that's something I've always quite liked about Nitrix. It's probably the only real distribution that puts app images front and center quite like they do. We also include a simple text file called installed underscore packages dot text in the root that, as its name suggests, lists all installed packages by default in the distribution. Users that have installed the distribution before this release will continue to get updates from the enabled repositories, i.e. Dev1, Neon and Ubuntu. However, it's important to understand that there's a divergence between the base and the new one. The packages coming from our repository will make references to packages not found in those repositories. And they've also done some nice updating of the theming, which we'll all check out once we are at the desktop as well. So with that being said, let's jump into the live environment and get this installed. Right, so here we are in the live environment. Now before we load the installer and get this all up and running, for those of you who like to skip the installation parts of these videos, there will be a timestamp below which will take you straight to the installed desktop. With that being said, the ISO size for this one is quite heavy at over 4.5 GB. Right, so now let's get this installed onto my system. So the installer it uses is of course Calamares. So first things first, I need to change my language from American English over to British English and continue and we're not in New York we're right about there which is for Europe London and next keyboard layout is of course UK and let's just test it out to make sure it's all working as it should and then jump to the next step okay so what we're going to do is drop that down to the Drevo X1 SSD which I've completely formatted prior to starting this video and we're going to do the erase disk and let that create the partitions for us now by default, another thing that I like about Nitrix is it actually uses ButterFS as its default file system. So as you can see there, we have two partitions, one for our EFI partition and then the rest all assigned to the root partition with of course ButterFS as our default file system. Next. Okay, user account time. So we're just gonna call this one Nitrix, type in our password, and we're gonna log in automatically. Okay, next. So we've got a little summary there to make sure it's all good and now as soon as we press install now the installation will begin and I'll pause the video here and come back once it's finished. Okay so we are fully installed and it was done in no time at all taking just a few minutes on my machine. With that being said let's reboot and check out our fresh installed Nitrix distribution. And here we are. Now I do really like the out of the box look and feel that we get with Nitrix. Before we start taking a look around though I can see that we've got some updates to grab in our little indicator right there. So let's see what we've got to go and get and I'll pause the video while it's doing this update and we'll come back to it once it's finished. So that's giving us a total download size of 185 MB. Okay, so before we start having a little run through of the desktop, I thought we'd have a quick glance at the system settings to see what versions of things we are currently using. So of course the KDE Plasma version is 5.21.4 and the kernel version is 5.4.108 and the graphics platform that we are using is X11. However, if you jump into the login screen, you can change it to a Wayland session. So as you can see, we are now in the login screen. And if we go to the top left here, you'll see that we have the default X11 as well as the Plasma Wayland session. 
I'm going to go back into the X11 and then we'll carry on with the rest of the video. Okay, so we're now back at the desktop and as of Nitrix version 1.3.2, they've dropped SystemD and we're now using OpenRC in its place. With that being said, let's have a quick run through of the out of the box look and feel you are going to get with Nitrix. So it's a nice single panel and dock layout utilizing a latte dock. So at the very top of our screen with our panel on the very right hand side we have our clock and then clicking now will open up a nice little shade from the right hand side of your screen with a little calendar widget there as well as showing you any events that you might have and we can also configure our location which I'm not going to worry about for now. We then have the drop down to get to the rest of the status and notifications which are NX notifications, Bluetooth, battery and brightness, night color control, KDE connect and our clipboard. We then have our little volume and then clicking that again is going to open up a nice shade on the right hand side of your screen with your sort of playback devices and at the very bottom we have a nice little widget there for media playback. We then have our current connection which is the Ethernet and then down at the bottom here we can jump to proxy, shared resources, SSL certificates and network interfaces. We then have our app indicator for updates which is going to be using Plasma Discover which we'll get into in just a moment as well. Now moving to the very left hand side of our panel we have our application launcher. So by default it's going to spread all of your applications across pages in a grid like view and on the first page it's going to be empty because here is where you're going to actually add your favorite application. So for example if we wanted to favorite Firefox we'd right click and go to add to favorites and now Firefox along with anything else that we add to our favorites will appear on this first page. We have a search bar and then just at the top of the search bar we have a little toggle to get straight to the system settings for KDE which we'll go into in just a moment as well. And then we also have nice little quick buttons here for lock screen and log out. Now that's the default sort of layout but there are a few other layouts that you can use out of the box on Nitrix. So with a right click on your panel you can notice that we then have the option for layout. So we have a few different ones here and we're currently on NX top panel 2. So if we check out NX bottom panel just for an example you'll see that it's going to remove the current panels and dock that's running and then consolidate everything into a single panel layout with the panel at your bottom. Again with your application launcher at the very left and then we have a few quick launches here. So for example clicking the file manager is going to open up Index which isn't an app image. This is a mail application which is sort of adaptive across different devices. And now what we're going to do is jump back straight into the default and then we'll carry on looking around. So again we're going to go to right click layouts and go to NX top panel 2. And that's going to restore our panel at the top and the dock at the bottom. So now that we're back in the default layout, I want to show you how it works when you've got some actual running applications. So going down to our Latte dock at the bottom, we're going to open up Index. And then as you can see there, all of your action title bars are on the sort of top left of that application window. And then once you full screen an application, it's going to remove them from the window and then place them at the left of your panel, giving you a bit more screen real estate for the application that you currently have maximized. Now you'll also notice that out of the box it's going to be using the Magic Lamp or Genie effect when it's minimizing and restoring an application and that way it looks like it's going straight into its applications icon and then open it once again it's going to do the same sort of animation the other way to restore that application. And with a simple right click on your desktop you can then get into some more options such as configure desktop and wallpaper, open with index, arrange your desktop icons so you can go sort by icon size, arrange and align and then you can also show K runner add widgets etc. Now while we've got this menu open we are going to jump straight into configure desktop and wallpaper because one of the great things about Nitrix is just how well thought out the design is. Everything looks very nice out of the box and that goes even far down as the wallpapers that you can use out of the box. Everything just looks like it belongs and has a nice cohesive look. And there's one wallpaper that I quite like in particular which is called Skyscrapers by Jason Wong. And we're going to apply that and use this wallpaper as we go through the rest of this distribution. What we're going to do now is spend a little bit of time going through the default applications. There's not a whole load here, so it gives you a nice foundation to build upon using your own applications. Bearing in mind the recommended way to manage applications is to use app images first. Okay, so most of these applications are going to be app images with a few Melwiki applications thrown in. So we have Arc for archiving, we have Boho, we have Clip, which we will test out with some media playback in just a moment. I haven't used this yet, so I'll be quite intrigued to see how that all works. And then we have a Discover, so Plasma Discover, which is where you're going to install native applications as well as manage your updates. And we're also going to enable the FlatHub repository because Nitrix is a 64-bit only OS, which means that you aren't going to be able to install the sort of native traditional package for Steam. We're going to have to use the Flatpak version, but we'll show you how that all works in just a moment. 
We then have Firefox, we have GIMP, we have Index for our file manager, we have Inkscape, we have Install Itch.io, we have KCalc, KDE Partition Manager, which is kind of like KDE's version of Gparted to manage and sort of erase partitions and all of that good stuff. We then have Kden Live, and it should be a nice new version of 20.12.3. And again, that should be an app image. And let's have a look at what that looks like with the full screen, moving the sort of title action buttons to the top of the panel. There we go, very nice. Let's keep this moving. So that's Kden Live. What else do we have? We then have Ksys Guard, we have Cavantum Theming Manager, and we have LibreOffice. Let's open this up, and it should be version 7.1. So let's quickly open up our writer document and then go straight into the help Annabelle and see what version that we are currently using. So we are using version 7.1.1.2 and we have the locale set as ENGB so we should have dictionary support working out of the box to automatically check our spelling for any mistakes as we keep moving. Okay, let's just close LibreOffice and then see what else we have. We then have LMMS which I do believe is a door, a digital audio workstation. We then have NitroShare which I think I first saw on Linux Mint, which is a handy little application if you've got a few different computers all in the same network. Running NitroShare, you can then sort of transfer files to and from those machines as long as they're on the local network and they are, of course, running NitroShare. We have Nota, Pix, Shelf, which again is a new Melwikit application in this release, which I do believe is just quite a simple PDF viewer. There we go, let's keep it moving. And then we have Spectacle for screenshots. Station is your default terminal. You can, of course, install Console if you prefer. System settings, Vivave. I'm sure I'll always say that wrong. And then we have Wine, and I'll show you how their sort of Wine implementation works as well. Now, what we're going to do is spend a little bit of time going through the system settings because there are some nice little features included in here as well. So starting in Appearance, let's have a look at the theming, and we'll also test out their light theme. So we're going to go straight into Appearance. And as you can see there, we're using their own Nitrux Dark, and then we also have Nitrux Mix, and then we have Nitrux. So let's go ahead and just apply Nitrux, which is the light feel. Let's click Apply, and now it's going to give you a more light themed with quite bright white. So I'm not a huge fan of light themes, but let's see what Index looks like while we've got that applied. And there we go. So if you like your light themes, you should be all good to go with the Nitrux light theme. But for me, I'm not really a light theme kind of guy these days. So we're going to go back and just leave it on Nitrux Dark. Okay, and we'll have to close index and then reopen it for the theme to then reapply with the dark theme. And there we go. Right, jumping straight into the application style. Again, it's using Nitrux, which I do believe has been forked from a different theme. They did say that in the release notes. And then going all the way down to icons, we can see that we are using the Love Icon Pack, which is a very nice icon pack. So that's pretty much everything I want to see in appearance. Now what I want to do is go into Windows Management because another cool thing that they have included out of the box on Nitrux is the KWIN script of Cronkite for those of you who like tiling windows. So if we go and apply that now, click apply, it's now going to automatically tile your application window. So for example, let's open up Index and it should tile it right next to it like so. Very nice. So let's close this off now and I'm just going to disable Cronkite for the moment by clicking apply and then getting back into floating window mode and then we can keep going with the rest of these features in the settings. Now going back, we also have Cups is installed out of the box, so we can do our sort of backup straight from the KDE system settings. We then have the NX Firewall, very simple stuff to configure your firewall straight from the KDE system settings. And then we also have the KDE Connect options built into the settings as well. So if we open up KDE Connect, it should find a few different devices there, so it's found an old Galaxy S9 I have, as well as my Pine phone, which currently has Manjaro's Plasma image installed. Okay, let's go back. And I don't think there's too much else I really want to look at in the system settings. So what we're going to do now is do a reboot and see how much RAM we're using on a fresh boot. Now it does have HTOP installed out of the box, along with some cool other command line tools. And then we'll start playing around with things. Okay, so we've just started back up and RAM usage isn't too bad, sitting at just under 800 MB at 775 so not super light, but not too heavy either. So with that out of the way, what I want to do now is jump into the release notes and see some of the other kernels that we can install. And then we'll enable the Flat Hub repository to install Steam and see if gaming is all working as it should. Okay, so what we're going to do now is test out installing one of the different kernels that they do have available in their repositories. So we can go for the Elicorix kernel or the Zamod kernel. 
I'm going to go ahead and keep it super simple and go for the Licorix kernel. If you're unsure of the package names, you can just go straight into their change log for Nitrix 1.3.9 and they have the commands right there for you so you can just copy and paste them over into your terminal if that makes life easier. So we do have a right click function on station and we can go straight into paste and then paste that command in and then that's going to go ahead and install the Licorix kernel for us. So I'll pause the video here and then when I come back we should be running the Licorix kernel. Okay, we are back and as you can see there, we are indeed using the Licorix kernel of version 5.11.0-10.1. So super easy. So what we're going to do now is go into the Plasma Discover Store and enable the Flat Hub repository, install Steam and make sure we can play a game or two of CSGO and that everything is working as it should. So we're going to go straight into our application launcher and open up Discover and they've made it super easy for you to go ahead and enable the Flat Hub repository just by going straight into your settings. And then we have a button here saying add flat hub so it's going to ask you for your password we might need to do a reboot after that so we'll do that now just in case and then we'll try and install steam from the flat hub repository okay so our flat pack version of steam has installed absolutely fine and is appearing in our application launcher and i've just played a round or two of csgo and everything is performing as i would expect on my hardware so i don't think you should have any issue using the flat pack version of steam as opposed to the native application. What we're gonna do now is get back into the desktop, test out their implementation of Wine and do some media playback, and then we'll start wrapping it up with some final thoughts. Okay, so on the Nitrix website, they have a very easy to follow guide on how to get up and running with their implementation of Wine. So I've downloaded the exact EXE they are using in this guide. So let's see how this all works. So first of all, you can use Wine in Nitrix. In fact, we already include it as an app image and you can access the app image by opening a terminal and typing the following wine. Let's do that now in our terminal. So we've just opened up wine. Right, so we're gonna go through and do the wine mono installer, get it all set up, and then we should be able to run this application. Okay, so we've just done the first run of wine, and next up we need to run a program with wine, and all that is required is to type wine and in the path to the exe. So we're in the path that we want, and one of the cool things about index is that we can press this little terminal icon right there, and it's gonna open up your terminal just below it, inside that directory so what we're going to do is type wine so we're going to go wine we'll do a tab and then that should be all we need to do so we're going to hit enter and see what happens okay so it's verifying the installer and now we're going to run through the portable apps installer like so okay so that installer has now complete so all we should have to do is type in wine and then go to the directory of the exe which we're going to do now and hopefully fingers crossed everything is working as intended so let's hit enter and we should there you go how cool is that so that's wine running in an app image on nitrix 1.3.9 very cool okay so to wrap things up we'll do our media playback test using the built-in applications of clip and vave i think i'm probably saying that wrong but we won't worry about that for now so for the audio file we're going to test out the youtube banger of scarlet fire so we're just going to press play and that should start playing it i've muted it so we don't get any feedback from the audio and now if we just press our little volume icon up the top we should also have access to the widget here where we can pause seek the actual area of the music and skip etc so that's all working absolutely fine and now we're going to test out this clip application which i've never actually used so we'll see how it goes i know it does actually have web support as well so you can go and search for something so let's say tyler's tech it then should find any of my youtube videos there we go right there and now what we're going to do is see how it works with a local file. So we're going to go back and I've got one video here that I just copied over, which is the Manjaro 21.0 video. So it's opened it up there and there we go. So video playback and audio playback is working absolutely fine with the built in applications. I've really enjoyed this little run through so far. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap it up there, but that's been my refreshed look of Nitrix version 1.3.9. And there's not much I can really say bad about it. It's one of the distributions that every time I use it, I really enjoy it. It's just a fun, fun distribution to use and it looks very nice out of the box. I like the fact that it's trying to do something a bit different and not just be another sort of Ubuntu clone or spin-off or one of these Arch-based distributions that we see popping up nearly every day now. And I like the fact that they put app images front and center and they make it very easy to use even down to the Wine app image is very cool. Definitely one that I recommend you give a go. So if you want to download it, I'd personally recommend not running it in a virtual machine due to all of the desktop effects. But they do have sort of information on their website if you do want to go ahead and run it into a virtual machine. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe. And if you've really enjoyed it, you can support me on Patreon. Also, join the Discord. There's a link in the description. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.